to Creative Cooking in Ani's Kitchen. My name is Ani, and today I'm going to bring you potato salad, um, not your normal potato salad. This is a Turkish style potato salad, and it comes, the recipe comes from the um, mountains of Azerbaijan, you know, in that region, and uh, it, it's very um unusual and uh but also delicious out of this world delicious trust me when i say so here are the ingredients i'm gonna use red potatoes you can use whatever potatoes you like your favorite and i've got to peel all of these so i'm gonna go away for a little bit and get that ready along with you're gonna need some pickled cucumbers which are pickles I'm going to use a little bit of sweet and spicy and hamburger dill. So I'm going to, I use the hamburger dill chips because they're already sliced. I'll slice them up a little bit more. I'll quarter them. And then I'm going to, these are spears. I'm going to slice these up and um, two bite-sized pieces. You're going to need some sun-dried tomatoes, okay? Um some olives, sliced olives. I'm going to use Kalamata sliced olives because I don't want the saltiness of the regular. And these aren't as salty as regular olives are. So then after that, you're going to need some olive oil. Okay. And spring onions. These are from my garden. So I'm going to cut these up. And I'm going to add a little bit of chopped basil, not too much, just a little taste. I'm going to chop these up, these also for my garden. And then I'm also going to do some dill. So those are a little bit of the basil, the dill, <clears throat> the sweet and sour or sweet and spicy pickles. Those are my added to this recipe. This is creative cooking. Also, um the olive oil. Now, I do want to say this. If you wanted to add chopped onions, green peppers, or anything else, you can. I mean, make it your own. That's what this, that's why this is creative cooking. We make it our own, okay? Make it to the taste and the likes of you and your family, what you all enjoy. Okay, and that is what creative cooking in the kitchen means. Okay, so without further ado, let me tell you what I have going on. I have a pot of water that I'm boiling. As soon as it boils, I'll add some uh, beef bouillon, and that's going to be for the potatoes um, because I'm going to serve this dish with a uh, nice thick roast or steak, I should say. Let me show you. I've already got it marinated. I do have to take it out and let it get to room temperature. And I marinated this yesterday. And here it is. And I'm after I cook this steak, I am going to baste it in some uh, ragu homemade ragu sauce okay that i had made for some meatballs and i have the jar of so sauce left over with some nice chunky tomatoes it's got garlic it's just a beautiful sauce and i'm gonna sit this in there and let it kind of just uh, stew in the sauce a little bit before serving and then that along with the turkish potato salad that i'm about to show you how to make and some roasted vegetables that I had also already made that's going to make a wonderful dinner with some dinner rolls okay so that's what's on the menu for tonight I'm going to leave this sitting out so it could get room temperature that's how you want to do your meats before you cook it and those are all meats all right you want to relax those uh cartilages and 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 uh, joints and whatever else if it has bones and stuff like chicken you want it relaxed so it can cook evenly and then throughout all right because a cold piece of meat will be rigid against the heat 
and you won't get an even cook and you probably won't get a thorough cook. So you always want to have your meats at room temperature, at least the minimum, uh, I would say 30 minutes before cooking and hours tops is best. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna, our water is almost boiling over here. So once it boils, I'll put in so, uh, beef bouillon, okay, a little bit of salt, and then I'll throw in my potatoes, which I have to peel first. So I'm going to go away and do that. I'll cut them when they're ready. I've got my little casserole for my potato salad. All right, isn't that cute? <laughs> a calf. All right, so... We've got this going on. I'm going to slice my pickles, peel my potatoes, and chop up my spring onions and basil and get that ready. And I will be right back. Okay, folks. So, we have everything chopped up. Our sweet and spicy and dill pickles. We have our... Uh, basil, spring onion, and dill all chopped up. Okay, I'm going to put in a little bit of this sweet and spicy juice. We have our olive oil and sun-dried tomatoes, and the Kalamata olives are already sliced, so I didn't have to worry about that. So now we're going to mix stuff in this bowl to mix in with the potatoes, which are cooking over here. Got them all peeled and put in their hole, and then I'll take them out and slice them the long way. You don't want to slice them in little cubes, okay? You want to slice them the long way. That's how they do it. So, i will open these bags, get these sun-dried tomatoes out, and we'll get to mix them, Okay. Why do they make these things so difficult to open? Hmm. I don't know. I'm just going to go ahead and use the scissors. Just There we go. It says resealable, but I don't need them resealable. Okay, so that's a lot of tomatoes. Why don't you think? I think that would be enough. I don't know, maybe one more packet. And we'll just put one away in the cabinet. Okay. And we'll use two packets. I think that's going to be more than enough. Okay, I only got like a two, two pounds of potatoes here that I'm cooking. You cook as much as you want. I mean, like I said, make it comfortable for you and your family. Okay, you know how much everybody eats. So you run that kitchen. We're going to get to mixing here. First thing I want to do to these sun-dried tomatoes, which are so beautiful, they are absolutely gorgeous, is put some olive oil. You're going to need about, I would say, half a cup of olive oil. Because the potatoes are going to soak it up. So that's about half a cup, I would say. If not, I'll add some more. That's the beauty of it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and throw in our pickles. Throw in our spices, our herbs. Okay. Now this also has olive oil, and it's uh, these are Greek style kalamata. Well, kalamata olives are Greek. Italians may want to differ. And we've got about half a jar in there. Put some of that juice in there. I want to put some of the sweet and spicy juice. It's got a lot of nice tomato bits and stuff from it. I want to get all that. I'm going to put the whole thing in there. Get that sweet and spicy going. And we're going to mix this up. And those uh, sun-dried tomatoes, 
they'll go ahead and absorb a lot of this liquid okay and they'll swell up a little bit and that's fine and this is our mixture this is going to go on top of the potatoes okay the beef flavored potatoes here's a kalamata olive mm. oh my god mm. That sweet and spicy juice, oh, it lends an incredible taste to the Kalamata olives, I got to tell you. That's delicious. Let me get another fork. I want to taste the uh, sun-dried tomato. See if I can get one. Here's a little one. And it's a sun-dried tomato. Don't taste that. Let's see. I don't look too terrible. Here it is. I'm going to give this a taste. Mmm. Oh, my. I could taste some of the basil and the dill. Mmm. With the olive oil. Oh. Those people in the mountains of Azerbaijan know what they're doing. I got to tell you, it's delicious. You've got to try this recipe. I've got to tell you that. I could just imagine with the added potatoes. This is a good dish. I tell you. It's a really good dish. So let's get on with the recipe. Okay, so these potatoes are done. You don't want them too soft. Um, you want them like just almost there. <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and take them out and cut them one by one and put them in our mixing bowl. Okay. right there. I know it's pretty big, but when you get to mixing, you don't want a big bowl so it doesn't overflow and stuff don't fly everywhere. So let me go ahead and get these out of the water real quick. Now, if you have a pet, you can save some of this and put it in their food because it's got beef flavor. Now, if you're going to make this with chicken, I suggest you put chicken bouillon. Then you want to match the meat. With my freaking reeking knife set, the mask is steel. I'm going to go ahead and start slicing my potato. First and half that way. And then the long way. And if they break, don't worry about it. Don't get upset. Because they will when you toss and turn. Some of them will break on you. Or you want them the long way. Like this. Okay. And let's get the rest out. I'll show you one more. And then I'm going to go away while I cut the rest and come back. I don't want to bore you. Boy, that was a real Brooklyn accent, wasn't it? Bore you. <laughs> ah, it comes out every once in a while. Okay. And that's it. That's how you're going to slice them. I'll be back. Okay, everybody, it's mixing time. These have cooled down some. Oh, I see a dark spot on this one. i take that out. It's all the time for mixing. We're going to take our delicious mix here and put it right on the potatoes. Now, you can put these ingredients in individually, but the way I feel about it is is that you lose the integrity of the potato. 
every time you got to mix something new in. So I like to just mix everything in one bowl, have my potatoes nice and cool, and then mix. That way I don't lose too many of them to mash, you know? I preserve the integrity of the potato. Look at this delicious mix. Oh my goodness, are you all seeing this? Ooh wee, this is gonna be good. Oh yes, out of delicious. Out of delicious, out of this world delicious. Oops, sorry. I need more room. <laughs> Not that I don't have enough room, but I, Ani, <laughs> needs more room. And then you just mix this puppy up and you got this delicious goodness right here. Oh yes, look at that. This is really beautiful. It smells incredible. Mm -hmm. You like this spoon? A beautiful friend of mine, a sister gave it to me. She thought of me in my kitchen. <laughs> and she sent me this gift. I thought it was beautiful. Alright. Look at the design on it. It's pretty heavy too. It's solid. Alright, so there is the Turkish potato salad. What do you all think? So get some more light on this. Hold on. Let's see what I can do to get some more light on this. Okay, I'll bring the salad over. Oh, yeah, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, yeah. I'm going to give it a good taste. And we shall see. You need to always let your potato salad rest and absorb. Let the potatoes absorb all the flavor. But just for you all, I'm going to go in and give it a good taste. See if I can grab a little bit of everything here. I don't want too much of a big potato right now. To save my appetite. Okay. I think I've got a little bit of everything on this fork. So... Let's see. Turn you around so y'all can see me. Yay! Okay, here we go. Ta da! Mmm. Mmm. This is so good. You'll have to try this. The flavors that just comes bursting through with the potato. Oh, oh my. You got to try it. Let's take a look at it again. Mm, look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. It's very tasty. I'm talking about bursting with flavor. Only thing I could think about adding to this, maybe some really diced up uh, peppers and onions that would complement it. And uh, I would do, actually, I would do the green peppers because th this is already sweet with the tomatoes and the basil. And the sweet and spicy pickle juice I poured in here. It is delicious, you all. You hear me? This is absolutely delicious. I wouldn't put any corn in there. I don't think I would put any peas, although I don't think it would hurt. Spinach, yes. That would probably be a good idea. Maybe even sprinkle some uh, panela or feta. Or even uh, some queso fresco, sprinkle some of that over it. 
That would be a good idea. But right now, this right here, this is kicking. This is going to go so great with our steak. Let me show you. Did I show you the steak? I can't remember what kind of steak this is. But it's a big one. She's pretty thick. She's about two inches, oh, about an inch and a half thick. Maybe two. She's pretty thick. Look at that. So that's going to be dinner. And again, I'm going to put it in some leftover ragu that I have made. Let me show you. I put it in a jar. Because when you make ragu this good, you don't let it go to waste. See? Look at all that goodness in there. Oh, it's got peppers. It's got fresh chopped garlic it, basil has got it all and it is delicious and i have made this to go with the meatballs i have made some meatball subs the other night first i made spaghetti and meatball which is i use angus beef meatballs and i get that from wild forks food let me show you the bag This is from Wild Forks Food. Excuse my dog. She's barking at someone at the door. Angus beef. And it's Rosina meatballs. Angus beef. And you want to talk about some delicious meatballs. They are already oven baked. I usually thaw them out and fry them up in a little bit of olive oil. Just to brown them. Sear them. They are delicious. Boots. Saddle. So anyway, let me get off here because before she prevents me from speaking. So anyway, so I have that sauce that I'm going to sit the steak in along with this and some roasted vegetables and dinner rolls. This is going to be beautiful and I'll be back with the finishing plate. See you then. Okay, folks, so here we have it. There is that beautiful salad right there. Look at all that goodness. Kalamata olive. There's the dill. You see all the spices and uh, the seasoning on there. See that? Oh, wow. That is absolutely gorgeous. And then you've got your sun-dried tomatoes. Look how beautiful that looks. And it's so delicious. Y'all really have to make you some. Well, as I said, I'm serving it with the roast that was just grilled. And we sat it in the uh, ragu that I had made. And let it sit there for about 15 minutes. Those are the roasted vegetables I did in the oven. They are so delicious. With some balsamic vinegar and brown sugar. Um, even lemon pepper. Um, what else did I put in there? Oh, some honey. Um... I did balsamic vinegar, I did a red vinaigrette, and white vinegar. And the mixture is just awesome. It's so delicious. So I roasted them for about 20 minutes at 450. And they came out so delicious. It's got cauliflower, broccoli, carrots. Uh, as you can see, the green beans, uh, peas. It's got some corn. Um, it's just delicious. Got a little bit of everything. Okay, so then he's got his regular salad. And then these are the dinner rolls that I made. They are so soft. Soft and fluffy. Go ahead and make that recipe. I posted that online, so you should have it. It's a very simple recipe. Anyway, this is it. This is dinner. There's the guest of honor, the Turkish potato salad from the mountains of Azerbaijan. Okay, so let's take a picture of that real quick. And this is dinner. Isn't that beautiful? Anyway, make yourself some. Give me a thumbs up, please. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. Smash that subscribe button over to the right. There's a little bell. Tap on that. That'll be your notification uh, every time I upload a new video. That way you don't miss out. You all have a blessed day. 
I love you in Christ. Take care of yourselves and one another. Until the next one. Bye.